So some types of content that primary sources are useful for, they're really useful for linking the, pre the past to the present. So they can support history lessons by providing students with a tangible item like a letter, a document, a picture, song lyrics, so that the students can have a better understanding of what that time period was really like. Um, primary sources can help kind of also explain the meaning behind symbols, so it can explain like, for example, why the dollar bill looks the way it does and some of the significance behind it. And then primary sources, Looking at them also helps strengthen students' ability as historical detectives, so it helps them read documents at multiple levels. So they're required to pay attention to sourcing information, select main arguments and support, look for credibility and bias, connect to context, and then they kind of ask questions like detectives. All right, some modifications which we've seen with both of these lessons. Um, so younger students in like grades, like what we're doing here, these pictures for the students to investigate, like Haley said, with large words they might not be able to comprehend. And then work together if there are harder, harder words or ideas. Um, and then for older students, like paragraphs and more complex documents could be used. And then have them underline and write more notes or questions in the margins while going through the text where younger kids might have issues with that. Okay, so some common pitfalls that can happen to teachers while using primary resources. Um, be sure to ask a question that elicits historical debates and not moral judgment. For example, 
asking students should the United States have used the atomic bomb from Firestone to have no knowledge. Like they can either say yes or no based on their own opinion. Um, and you want them to reference the historical primary source that you gave them. Um, be sure to use documents and sources that your students can read and write. For example, pictures. If they're younger, it's easier to give them pictures so they don't have to read an entire document. Um, consider using short excerpts or modifying difficult language. Maybe if you have a couple TESOL learners, it would be easier if you help them. They can write some key terms on the board that help um, define certain words. Um, common format for historical questions. So there are three different types of questions that you can ask. So casual questions, what caused X? Exploratory questions, what did X have? Why did X happen? And then evaluation questions, was X a success? All right, so we're gonna get into our lesson. You are now first graders. <laughs> okay, so welcome to class, first graders. Um, before this class, we talked about primary sources and a lot of about American symbols. So in your groups, on your table groups, I'd like you to talk about primary sources. Maybe what are some examples for it? I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> I come back together. I'm going to have each group. Um, tell me something that they talked about. So if anybody has a volunteer, go first. Yeah. We talked about the Constitution. Yeah, because that's a primary source. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what's another one? We talked about, like, if you took a picture of something, that you would come to it. We talked about books. Yep. Any type of books? Okay. Okay, so as you can see in front of you, you all have a copy of the Star Spangled Banner. So what you're going to do with this is you're going to look at it, and you're going to try and see if you can make any observations, anything that catches your eye. And as soon as you see anything that you notice, raise your hand, and then you're going to explain to me why it catches your attention. Yeah. Up at the top where it says service version, and I Um, somebody in service, so maybe in the army, 
then they do something like that. Um, and then that way, when you come back to it, you can kind of think about, okay, was I correct? Um, what can I use to try and gain more information about that? And how can I reflect on that later on? So what else did somebody notice? Yeah? It has liberty and justice for all, which is part of the pledge. You said that's part of the pledge, right? Yeah. Okay. So you might want to and that way you're relating it to something that you already know about and that you use in everyday life. Okay, what else is it coming up? If you can look at the other pages as well. So there are three voices in the, on the front, so that might be the people singing it. Oh, okay. So there's one that I'm going to do. Do you have any other ideas of what it might mean? Maybe the piece that it's in? That's too hard. Go ahead and do yourself. On the inside of the answer to the question about the services. Oh, that's a great answer. So maybe you can put a star next to here. Or some little hint to yourself later on that you found the answer. And how about one more thing that somebody said? There's also the last page with the historical note. Yeah. Um, on the front page again, there's like handwriting on the top and the bottom. Oh. circled on your paper. 
right, we'll go ahead and get started on it. So what we'll do is I'll call on someone to say what they've seen in their picture, and then I'll actually have you come up and circle it on the Elmo, on the picture up here, and then explain why you circled it and what you wrote down. So anyone want to go first? Yeah. Do I say it and then You can do both. <laughs> <laughs> I circled this and down here where it says enlightening because this is a torch and down here it says enlightening so I think those are how to do That's a good question. I didn't think of that. Another one? Do you everyone hear what Mikeena said? Mikeena, do you want to repeat that? Sure. I circled it because I felt like maybe it kind of correlates with the, the number of flag, the number of stars in the flag, because it's kind of like a starry base. Oh, nice. Wow. Very deep. <laughs> 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 Alright, another one? Does anyone know where this is located? New York. New York. Okay. Yeah. Probably a good thing to see. Alright, another one. Let's get a couple more up here. Let's do three more. Haley. My tongue is good for theirs. I just didn't know what this meant, like what that said, and if there was any significance. It's important, though, to make note of what you don't understand, too. Maybe, so maybe you can investigate later. You can do some researching. All right, two more? There's a lot going on in this picture. Yeah. Um, I was wondering why it's right on the water. Does that any significance? All right, one more. <laughs> Good work. All right, now we'll move on to our next activity, which is a little more harder. Okay. So this time we're going to be looking at a different primary source. This is called Uncle Sam's Coffee. Now this time when you're looking at this piece of paper, I want you to sit and observe it alone. So we're going to think for ourselves, once everyone has a piece of paper, for 30 seconds, you can circle, draw arrows, but no talking to your partner just yet. <laughs> so 30 seconds, all to yourself. with everyone at your table and some of the things that you circled yourself <coughs> or starred. And we're going to talk about that and what you observed. So ready, go. Well, I noticed there was one flag on my and one flag on your table. So I feel like that was not a flag. It's like you know, I'm stars. It's also like a different country's flag. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. I have no yeah, because today would be Palestine. Did you hear the news this morning? Oh, Trump is going to have to declare this. Can you turn it up to the signal? I'm only going to come more violence in my opinion. 
It's not a good thing. Yeah. 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 You can also talk about some questions maybe you had. Maybe something you didn't understand. That's what I was thinking. I was trying to figure out how to I I see I that you observed. Yes. Um, I read the text at the bottom and it said it was like under the year of 1863 which was right there. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, there's like one flag floating in the air and another one's under his feet. Very good. Right, you can kind of see up here and then from that here. You can know what the time period is. Okay. There. Well, the flag's really weird looking too. There's like a Y to the bottom, mm -hmm. and then there's not like the normal amount of stars. But I guess that would make sense like what it was. That's very good. There's definitely not the stars up there. There's not. Well, that line really confusing. <coughs> yeah. The one going up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's not an X, it's just like a one line. It's just like a one line. I guess you can kind of see uh, maybe. I don't Okay, so in the reflection column, we're going to talk about what you think is happening there. Anything that you think is happening. It could even be as simple as he's standing on a flag. Yes? We notice that there's like some, a lot of like American symbols in the corner and like back behind him. Oh, yeah. the eagle, mm -hmm. and the shield. Right here. Yeah, so we're thinking that maybe that represents like some great human Okay. So that's <laughs> Yeah, I need two more. I'm not sure if I'm exactly right because I know like tobacco was really profitable back then, but maybe they're trying to promote the war and trying to use coffee as like a cover up for it. Okay. That's really good. Yeah, it's definitely He's like whittling or like sharpening something. Yeah, or right. Something because he's a man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think it might symbolize? Or is it like man? Um, I think it's a war. Is it a weapon? Like a weapon? Yeah. yeah. Why do you think the man is doing it? Not a woman on there. I don't know what that is. And we're doing everything and we're not really about to. Okay, so now we're going to fill in our last column. So any questions that you have looking at this? Yes. Where's the coffee? <laughs> That's a great <laughs> question. <laughs> right? Where's the coffee if it's called Uncle Sam's Coffee? Uh -huh. <laughs> Uncle Sam is there. Where's the coffee? Any other questions? Yes. What is the flag that he's stepping on? Mm -hmm. And then one more. Yes. Who's Uncle Sam? Who's Uncle Sam? That's a very good question. That could be something you could look into later if you mm -hmm. were looking to do some research. So this is just an example of a chart of you could do when maybe you're filling out some notes just to focus on time and <laughs> All right. Okay, so for our last activity, 
Sorry, the printer kind of got funky, so some of you might have weird colored ones, but you can still see details. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to show you. We're going to look at this 19th century picture from a multi-story home in Tunisia, which is right in the northern part of Africa by Libya. So now we're going to look at a document from another part of the world. So for this one, we're going to work on comparing and contrasting. Can anyone tell me what comparing and contrasting means? What are we looking for when we compare and contrast? Yeah, Jess? Um, comparing are like finding similarities, so like things that are alike between them, and contrasting is finding differences, so things that like one might have that the other doesn't. Right, so in this one, we're actually going to be looking for similarities and differences between this picture and your own homes. So right now, I just want you to observe, talk to, um, think, pair, share with the person next to you, and just pick out one similarity for now that you see between this house and your home. <laughs> Okay, can I just take one volunteer so we have an idea of what we're looking for in this? Yeah, you talked about there's a lot of windows and we have windows in our house. Okay, right. So there's a lot of windows and you have windows in your house and home. So for this activity, what we're going to be doing is you're going to be circling those similarities, okay? So you're going to circle those similarities and write a little note next to it. And then if you see any differences, you're going to put a heart around the differences and write a note about what's different next to it, okay? So right now, you can work with your table, and I just want you to look for at least three similarities and three differences, and then write at least two notes. Mm -hmm. Mark what you found up here. Actually, we'll do, we'll look for two similarities and two differences. We're going to have four volunteers, okay? So, does anyone want to come up and show a similarity that they found? And go ahead, you can mark a little note next to it. Stairs. 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 And some of these, too, you'll notice that they're similar to your house because you have them at your house, but they might be different as well. They, like, do a lot of you have these type of stone stairs outside your house? Mm -hmm. Yes, so we have similar things, but they could also be a little different, too. Another similarity? There's lots of windows. Do you want <laughs> All right, now can we have two people come up and circle differences? Yep. Uh, it's like the material that the house is made of. Oh, it's like. 
we could look into that later. Yeah. We can investigate later and see. Um, one more. <coughs> Um, so, uh, because like the, the shape of it is like different than, um, you know, the house up here. Is that all one house or is it all I think that there's like, I think there's multiple. Yeah, I think there's multiple, but it just doesn't look like an apartment building here, does it? symbols, landmarks of the countries around the world. So you might want to think about how we have the Statue of Liberty here, and that kind of represents a symbol of the United States. Um, so could you give me any examples of symbols of other countries? Yeah? Um, the Tower. Okay, and where's that located? Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So all of these um, kind of represent the culture of the countries that they're in. So for example, the Statue of Liberty um, actually has to do with the immigration here and was built around Ellis Island. Um, and that's an important part of our history. So does anybody have any idea of maybe why these other um, symbols represent the culture of their other countries that we talked about just now? <coughs> importance or significance of things? Yeah? The Great Wall of China was made to, like for battles and stuff to like, keep people out of China, so it, it represents history in China. Mm -hmm. Maybe one more. This one. Because it's getting the late time. <laughs> I think generally they probably just like cover milestones in each, yeah. you know, area's history. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to put it. And that way people can look back at them and reference um, important things in history and kind of flash back to how their country grew. And, and stories and people, right? You know, my brother was just going by the, the Berlin Wall in Berlin, and just think of the rich stories, good, bad, and ugly, right, of, of the Berlin Wall, um, but it being broken down to East and West Berlin, but why was it there in the first place, who did it harm, who did it help, and so there's those symbols and those pictures, kids come in with natural curiosities, and the school ha happens to just crush them usually, and I think this is a great way, you know, to, kids will be asking a million questions, I know in my high school, I taught 407, which is the high school version of this, to start uh, historically everyone. He first brought a picture of himself when he was like their age. 
and he put it on the table, and oh my goodness, they just jumped on that picture. And there was a girl in the room, is that your girlfriend? You know, and they just asked a gazillion questions. And then he put a store forward and said, now ask those kinds of questions. And they, and they did. It was a really good pictures and symbols and artifacts, right? Just bring so much more than just handing a piece of paper. And so I look at just doing what Ben's dream, what he remembered from last week, was it's interesting, right? And so those visuals are so important. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Got All right. It. Mm -hmm. that's it. All right. Thank you. Do you want to right. stop this? Oh, yeah. <laughs>